The natural deductive system that we're going to use to prove arguments valid is Fitch system. Fitch system offers a highly stylized way of proving that an argument is valid. And because it's highly stylized, what that means is we need to be familiar with what the aspects of a proof in Fitch are representing, what they're supposed to be informing us of. And that's what this video is about. So let's turn to that. When providing a proof in Fitch system, one of the things you'll notice is a vertical line. And this vertical line consists of a series of steps, some of which are going to be premises and some of which are going to be inferences. What you'll also notice is a horizontal line. Everything above the horizontal line is a premise. Everything below the horizontal line is an inference. So for instance, perhaps you have a proof in which you're told that A is a tetrahedron, and you're also told that if A is a tetrahedron, then B is a cube. Since these are premises, the fact that they're above the Fitch bar, that horizontal line, when we're thinking about the steps that we want to take, we get to pretend that we know these are true. So we just get to accept them as though they are true. So remember, when we're worried about validity, we're interested in whether the, conf the conclusion must follow from the premises. That is, if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. That's what we would like to prove. So, in doing that, we start off first with the, the assumption that the premises are true, and then based on that, we see if the conclusion must be true. So, notice that if it really is true that A is a tetrahedron, and it really is true that if A is a tetrahedron, then B is a cube, it's going to turn out that it has to be the case that B is a cube. And that's an inference. And it's an inference because where we get B is a cube, step three, we are pulling that from the information in one and from two. And in this case, not only is it an inference that we're making, but it's a good inference. This inference is licensed. It's a legal move, if you will. Why? Because if step one and two are really true, that is, if it really is true, as two says, that A being a tetrahedron guarantees that B is a cube, and it really is true that A is a tetrahedron, then there is no way for it to be false that B is a cube. That is, if 1 and 2 are true, it's going to turn out that 3 has to be true as well. So one of the things that we have to do in giving a form of proof is to tell ourselves or anybody else who is to read our proof why this is a good inference to make, why it's a legal move or a licensed move. And what we'll be seeing is that we're going to introduce all sorts of rules that um, the reason why we're introducing them is because they stand to be good rules, and it turns out that they are good rules. Um, so in step three, for instance, 
the rule that we would need to cite is what we call conditional elimination. And that's how we represent it in fit system. And not only that, but we have to tell the person who is reading this proof, or for good note keeping for ourselves, where that information um, is coming from, what information we're relying on in using this rule correctly. And in this case, it's step one and step two. Now let's say that our goal in providing this proof is to show that A is a tetrahedron and B is a cube follows from our premises, step one and step two. Okay. Uh, in other words, what we want to show is that the following argument is a valid argument. A is a tetrahedron. If A is a tetrahedron, then B is a cube. Therefore, both A is a tetrahedron and B is a cube. So if that's what we want to show is valid, if that's, what we, if that's the argument that we want to demonstrate is valid, we're not done yet because we need a step that mirrors this completely. Now we can see that it really is the case that A is a tetrahedron, at least under the assumption that we get to start with the assumption that it's true that A is a tetrahedron. And we've shown that it's true that B is a cube. So it is going to be true that A is a tetrahedron and B is a cube. But we need a rule to prove to somebody who's reading this or for good note taking for ourselves. We need a rule that allows us to move from step one and step three to the proposition that A is a tetrahedron and B is a cube. And in fact, we have such a rule. And that rule is going to be what we call conjunction introduction. And the information that's going to um, license us to use this rule to get to our goal is step one and step three. So based on step one and step three and the rule conjunction introduction, it will follow that A is a tetrahedron and B is a cube. And now, at this point, we can stop because this mirrors the goal or it just is the conclusion of the argument that says A is a tetrahedron. If A is a tetrahedron, then B is a cube. Therefore, both A is a tetrahedron and B is a cube. All right, so I want to end this video by discussing with you how it is that Fitch system, as a natural deduction system, goes about um, proving that valid arguments are, in fact, valid. We said that a valid argument is an argument that has the following property. If its premises are true, then its conclusion must be true. So then, the idea says there's something about the information that's contained in the premises, whether it's true or false, that if it were to be true, it would guarantee that its conclusion must be true. Okay. So the idea 
behind validity is there's something about the information in the premises that if the premises were to be true, that truth would be preserved into the conclusion. It would force the conclusion to be true. That's the idea behind validity. All right, so the connection then between if are true and must be true is this notion of truth preservation. All right, so to connect that up to Fitch system, we're wondering if these are true, does that make it such that this must be true? And the way that it tries to show that is first, hey, pretend like these were true. That's why we get to accept them as true, even if they're false. Hey, pretend like these are true. And then use these rules to make inferences and only make inferences when they follow what the rule says to do. And that's because as we introduce each of these rules, the point of introducing them is we know that they're truth preserving. In fact, at some point you can prove that they're truth preserving. So by each inference moving from something that we already know to be true, in this case, we would be moving from step one and step two, using a rule that's going to guarantee that this inference is true because this rule is truth preserving. Same thing here. As long as we use this rule correctly and we use it on steps that we already know are true, in this case, back to two, but now to three, then we're gonna know that this inference is true. And again, if we use this next rule correctly, we'll know that the following inference is true because it goes from four, which we know, which we've already proven to be true, and it goes to Number step five, which we've already proven to be true. And if we keep on doing that, and we end with a correct usage of the rule, and we use those rules correctly the whole time, we're gonna know that the truth that we started up, that we started with up in step one, step two, in step three got carried all the way down into our conclusion and therefore must be true it just proved that is it just shows that this is a property of the argument that consists of the premises one, two, three, and however many other premises there are, and then our conclusion. That's your introduction to Fitch system. The natural deduction system we'll be using in this course. Thanks for watching.